become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I'd like to talk more about uh, power exercises used by the Olympic weightlifting greats of the Silver Era. So we're talking about John Grimmick, John Davis, etc. Which were excellent for developing strength. And back in the Silver Era, there was a common crossover between weightlifting and bodybuilding. And when bodybuilders wished to put on further mass, they would turn to natural methods to develop further strength in their physique, unlike nowadays where trainees don't know what to do except uh, look for the needle. So over the next few videos actually, I'm going to be talking about some relatively unheard of exercises, long forgotten exercises, which the greats such as John Davis, Steve Stanko, Kavil Daly, Herman Gurner, the mighty Gurner, Mark Berry, the inventor of the 20 rep squat, all of these guys used to develop uh, further strength using these uh, particular exercises that I'll be talking about today. And I do hope that such exercises, if adopted by yourself, can help you in your pursuit of strength and muscle. Now, a great exercise called the high deadlift, or, and nowadays is actually still used by Olympic weightlifters, called the high pull, um, was a favorite of John Davis and Steve Stanko, two real legends of the uh, Olympic weightlifting team in, in America back in the 40s and 50s. And um, basically what it looks like is, as the name suggests, uh, doing a deadlift and pulling it as high as possible. You're basically trying to almost clean the weight. Of course, you can't clean such weight unless you're an absolute monster, but you want to use um, a power rack nowadays and if you don't have access to a power rack you can always use um, a couple of wooden boxes and uh, use a poundage that you would be able to do five repetitions on your deadlift with so for example uh, for me that would be almost uh, 100 and anywhere between 140 to 160 kg so you want to be using a five rep max in your deadlift poundage somewhere be, you know if you're strong enough somewhere between 300 and 400 pounds and um, you want to take an overhand grip as shown in this image here and once you deadlift the weight as you're pulling up you try and clean the weight you try and clean it up to your shoulders of course such a heavy weight is is uh, really difficult right we're talking three four hundred pounds um, and you want to bring it as high as possible and you want to do three sets of five reps now notice that when you're doing this high deadlift and pull if you know your Olympic weightlifting technique, you're actually going to rise up on your toes as well. So it's going to do a hell of a lot of work on your thighs and your calves. Right? It's actually also going to work your traps, your deltoids, your triceps and erector spine. It's going to work your whole body. It's a full body motion. And over the weeks, you want to increase your repetition slowly until you can do basically between 12 to 15 reps. And once you can do three sets of 12 to 15 reps, reps using the poundage that you started off with, you can add poundage. And as mentioned, this was an excellent, excellent exercise used by John Davis and Steve Stanko back in the day. Now, this exercise, the stiff-legged clean, I have to admit is very, very difficult and was a favorite of Joe Miller and uh, better known Kavil Daly, um, who have actually done a video on, and I can link the video above. This guy had phenomenal back development for a guy in the 40s. Really, really amazing development in his back. And... Um, what you want to do is take your weight um, of your snatch and use a poundage that's 5 to 10 pounds lower than your best snatch. If you don't know what your best snatch is, well then you're just going to have to basically find out. And um, you basically grip the, the uh, bar slightly wider than shoulder width and you clean the bar as high as possible. Um, but you keep your legs stiff as you pull the bar up with no split. So traditionally one would do a snatch or a clean and jerk with a split, but you do not split the legs. You want to keep them as stiff and as straight as possible with no dipping of the knees or anything. And this is going to work your back, your delts, and of course your hamstrings a lot, right? And um, obviously increase your strength because you're doing it in a stiff legged position. If you can do it in a stiff legged position over the weeks, this is going to really increase your uh, pulling power and um, uh, translate of course to increase strength 
in all your in, in all your exercises in, in bodybuilding and again you want to start off with three sets of five reps and work up slowly over the weeks to 12 to 15 reps and then increase the weight again this is a favorite of Kavil Daly and Joe Miller now the bent over is an interesting exercise that was favored a lot by weightlifters back in the day especially um, people that used to do one hand snatches uh, simply because it translated so well into this particular lift. This is a favorite of Mark Berry and also the Good Brothers. If you haven't heard of these guys, look at them, look them up. But Mark Berry, you should definitely know who Mark Berry is. He is the creator of the 20 rep squat. And if you don't know who that is, for, you know, for shame, you should definitely know who this is. This guy's an absolute legend. And I have covered him briefly in a video on the evolution of bodybuilding um, that I've previously um, made. Now the bend over works a lot on the core, on the legs and on the back, especially the erector spinae. Now what you want to do is use uh, your dumbbell shoulder press 5 to 8 rep max, right? So let's uh, assume that your best 5 rep um, or up to 8 reps for your dumbbell shoulder press is, uh, let's say, uh, 50 pounds. Let's just assume, right? And what you want to do is press it and hold it at arm's length, right? So you're standing up with the dumbbell pressed over your head at arm's length and you bend you begin to bend over at the waist keeping the legs straight and so let's say you've pressed the dumbbell to arm's length with your left arm therefore your right arm is free you bend over at the waist keeping the legs stri uh, straight and you touch your um, your left toes right you want to twist and touch your left toes but as you do that you do not drop your eyes from the dumbbell the most important thing is to keep your eyes on the dumbbell and it, this requires incredible balance right and not just that but coordination so this is an excellent exercise also for coordination and for developing strength in one-handed lifts such as the one sorry the one arm snatch and as well as the bent over press these are excellent and they develop your obliques so this is a word of warning as well. A lot of people who want that classic physique do not wish to develop their obliques, and this would not be for you. But if you are uh, purely interested in lifting as much as humanly possible and being an absolute beast, then this shouldn't worry you at all. And um, it's definitely going to work your, um, your erector spinae and your core, your overall balance, your leg strength, your coordination. It's an excellent exercise. And uh, again, you want to start off, in this, this, in this case, with uh, three sets of eight reps and work up to 12 to 15 reps before increasing the poundage. Now a final exercise I'd like to talk about is another excellent exercise for overall coordination and it is the one hand swing. Uh, performed a lot in the uh, bronze especially in silver era it was a favorite of the mighty Gurner that's right Herman Gurner who would um, routinely uh, in his in his stunts perform 50 repetitions with a 110 pound dumbbell like it was nothing Damn, <laughs> that is heavy heavy and uh, of course this works the, the whole body arms legs back delt the works right and it, again it's excellent for coordination you want to use the weight as you would for bendo so that's your five eight rep max in a dumbbell press and you want to grab the weight as shown in the photo here um, between the legs and you want to swing it up to shoulder level and then bring it back down to um to your yeah to, to basic to the floor between your legs and you can train this one arm at a time so it actually really improves your coordination and uh you can start because this particular exercise is more about coordination and not so much initially at least for the beginner about strength you can start with higher reps such as three by twelve and work up to a more higher repetition range of 15 to 20 as you become more advanced and coordinated with the exercise. Now a more advanced version of the swing of course is to perform it with two dumbbells as shown here by Thomas Inch. This was another favorite exercise of strongmen back in the day in the bronze era especially and a real overall body conditioner. A lot of people uh, such as Steve Reeves even used this so um, it was an excellent uh, exercise used back in the silver and bronze era. Now if you're interested in learning more about the Olympic weightlifting programs of such greats like Louis Abel, I have a very rare booklet written by Chester Teagarden who was a, an associate 
editor of Iron Man magazine. Now, Iron Man magazine was an excellent magazine that ran all the way from the 40s until the mid 80s by Perry Rader. And uh, the information that these guys put out was, was just gold. And um, training programs of Louis Bell is just insane. I mean, this guy talks about his methods of training the, uh, the squat, training the back, training the shoulders. And um, it's just insane the um, kind of intense workouts that these guys had. Um, he even talks about within, within this uh, booklet some of the training programs that the great John Davis used to do. It's just insane the information you find in these books. And again, it's all about gaining strength and um, gaining massive muscle. These guys were pretty huge for the Silver Era. All of them well over 200 pounds. So they were massive. Another excellent booklet that I have online is uh, Strength and Bulk Training for Weightlifters and Bodybuilders by Reg Park, of course. Again, full of intense, and I mean intense workouts uh, with compound exercises such as the bench, the squat, the deadlift, all about building power and massive uh, muscle. Um, it's all available on, on my website, www.goldenerabookworm.com. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on power exercises used by Olympic weightlifters that had a crossover in, in bodybuilding, especially in the silver era, which many bodybuilders adopted when they wished to uh, increase their muscle mass even further. Of course, by strengthening your foundation, that is your joints and your bones, it's your foundation, and therefore you can add much more muscular mass. And I'll be following up this video with a look at some of John Grimmick's really insane methods for developing strength. Um, one that's going to blow your mind. So I hope you enjoy that. That's coming up. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm. Thank you for watching and leave me your comments. If you'd like to support my work, please donate via PayPal or become a patron. And you can visit my website for old school bodybuilding courses and books. That's www.goldenerabookworm.com. Thanks for watching. This is the Golden Era Bookworm. Bye for now. I just want to recommend this phenomenal book, Vince's Secret Locker, volume number two by Carl Coyne. I've been looking at this for about four weeks and I can't put it down. If you get a chance, check it out. He also has a part one that I, I highly recommend also. Uh, Vince was the trainer of the stars and had an amazing, interesting gym that today there's still not equipment like, uh, like it around. It was all made out of wood. Uh, he'll be on our radio show coming up probably in the next couple weeks or so. Have a great day, and again, highly recommend this book.